That's how things look in our neck of the woods. It is frozen solid out there. Temperature's coming up near freezing though, so we're getting a tiny bit of melt off the roofs here and there, and also in the trees. Anyway, we're doing fine here. Our power has stayed up, but we're getting intermittent flickering, like something's going on upstream in the lines. And our water has been out for about 36 hours. There was a major failure at the uh, city water pump, but uh, they're starting to pump some dirty water back up through the lines. And it's not drinkable, but it's useful for flushing toilets. And yes, this is municipal water. That's pretty common across Texas this afternoon. Okay, so that's going to be it for the news. You can catch the rest online somewhere. Let's see what's happening around the country. The map is showing that we are getting rid of this polar air. Temperatures are actually a little bit mild up north. Well, I mean, it's still cold, but that's definitely an improvement. And down in Texas, 20s and some 30s. So we're seeing significant modification of the air mass, and that means temperatures will gradually come up over the next few days. The problem is that we've still got extensive snow cover. It's kind of hard to see it beneath all this cloud cover, but it is there, and that's going to continue to generate polar air for the next uh, couple days. So the two effects are going to cancel each other out. And we have a third wave working across Texas this afternoon, and that's brought snows once again to the San Antonio area. You can see it there on the radar composite, and that's going to be dumping about anywhere from one to three inches down there. And you can see that's kind of heading towards the woodlands, maybe North Houston, and perhaps College Station. There's the surface plots, San Antonio, one mile in snow, one to two miles in snow out in Hondo in the hill country, and that precip has not quite advanced out east just yet, but it looks like uh, around Seguin, a little east of there also reporting some snow. There it is. You can see the snowfall advancing over San Antonio, but not going very much further east. And you can see that snow area moving east, but doesn't quite make it to Houston. So what's happening there? Let's take a look at the soundings. Well, there is some dry air, but not a whole lot of it. So I would be inclined to think that maybe upper level lift is a problem. I can see through the elevated layer and in the dendritic growth zone, looks like it's indicating downward motion. So maybe the dynamics are outrunning the surface features. Well, taking a look at the heights and vorticity chart, it looks like there is some lift in the left exit of a jet max. And that jet max located right there over northern Mexico. And if we run that forward, yeah, it looks like by midday, a lot of the lift located right there in East Texas. And then moving forward, I'm not even sure we have any lift. The whole thing looks awfully channeled, although there is this little lobe coming through the base of that trough. So maybe not quite over. Still indicating some lift there along the coast just after dark, and then that will be advancing eastward into Louisiana, Mississippi, and eventually into Georgia midday tomorrow. And look at that ridging coming in. Height rises, that's going to mean a gradual warming trend and a tendency towards fair skies. Now we do have this new trough coming on shore in Northern California. Well, that could be a problem because that could go into the base of this long wave trough and carry that towards Texas. And indeed, that's what's happening there. But it looks like this goes a little bit further north into the Panhandles, Kansas, and Oklahoma during the day on Sunday. And by that time, we should have enough warm air advection to not have to worry about any wintry weather. So that continues moving east. You can see by Monday, it's over the eastern U.S. 
And then we get into another fair period. There's the next trough, and that'll be mostly a feature for the Midwest region later in the week. And then for the southern U.S. on Wednesday, we have to worry about that thing. That one's headed for Texas, and that looks a little bit strong there. Quite often this time of year, that can be associated with thunderstorms if we have sufficient tropical moisture. However, dry conditions in the low levels indicating northerly flow, so that means that lift is going to be working on a dry air mass and not do very much. So, And it looks like the best opportunities would be on Wednesday, the 24th, as we get that initial moisture surge, and by then, looks like the next cold front has come through. And the GFS not really signaling any widespread thunderstorms on Wednesday. So at this point, it looks like maybe it's a little bit too dry and not enough lift. You can see that lift coming in there a little bit late. And it looks like it pops out on the other side on Friday. So yeah, maybe some thunderstorms for the southeast U.S. Okay, let's consider our air mass structure here. Modifying polar air across the central U.S. Also some polar air in the eastern U.S. with some damned cold air in the Carolinas. And this old occlusion in West Virginia. And then out in Georgia and off the coast of Virginia, a couple of waves moving up the polar front. And the western edge of that Arctic air right there along the Sangre de Cristos and the Front Range. You can see the difference in the air mass. 26 degrees there at Tucumcari. Cloudy skies and north wind. And you go over to Gallup at a much higher elevation. Sunny and 30 with fair skies. And pretty similar conditions across Utah, Idaho, and Nevada. Then taking a quick look up in Canada... This is not a scenario that we associate with polar outbreaks. This indicates a very progressive flow, some troughs moving off the Rockies, cool conditions, and most of the Arctic air generation locked up way up there in the high Arctic. Temperatures are certainly cold in that region, but there's nothing here that would indicate any of that air coming south. Low pressure up to the north, high pressure down to the south, and that means that there's a tendency for the air to flow from south to north. If food don't kill you, the service will. Well, one thing that we know from horror movies is to never turn your back on the villain. And that probably means we should check up on that polar vortex. Currently, it is centered up there in northern Baffin Island, where we typically find it. Another piece of it up there in Siberia. And let's run forward and see what happens. Looks like a very progressive flow across the U.S. and southern Canada. The polar vortex kind of wanders out there towards the Beaufort Sea and eventually returns into the high Arctic, but it does not come south. A couple large waves moving through the U.S., so we will see active weather still, but it's not going to involve very much cold air. And towards the very end, little cutoff flow moving across the southwest U.S. Now, one way to assess the cold air is to look at the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. That's what it looks like now. And you can see those dark purple colors indicating 12 degrees below normal. This is up at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. And this is typically what we see with the dissipation phase of a cold air mass. Now, what it looked like about two days ago was more like this. Bright white indicating 25 degrees below normal. But as we advance forward, you can see that modification taking place across the central U.S. So bringing that back to the current time, let's go and see what's happening over the next two weeks. There's the dissipation of that cold air gradually moves off towards the eastern U.S., and we get that warming trend in the central states. And we can see the effects of westerly flow and downslope conditions in southern Canada. And meanwhile, the Arctic air remains locked up in the Arctic. Some pretty good cold air up there in northwestern Russia. 
I don't know if that's going to make it to Europe. Actually, they've got progressive flow, so probably not. And then going forward, not much change. Some of that Arctic air works into the Saskatchewan area. Manitoba, Alberta, but does not come very far south. Towards the very end, we do get a shot of cold air coming into the Midwest. You can see that come together right there. The generation of cold air indicating probably snowpack across the northern U.S. And that does happen in early March. However, this is over 300 hours out, and that's way too early to call. So let's see what's in store over the next week or so. Starting out, cold air advection across Texas, southeastern U.S., but most of the upper level lift has moved east. And that's producing some snow in New York City and some mixed precip in New Jersey. Into tonight, not much change. A little mixed precip developing across the Washington, D.C. area in southern Pennsylvania. And you can see this wave coming together in Georgia. So things will remain unsettled in that part of the country. High pressure in Texas, so another cold night for this region here. We're expecting teens across much of North Texas and 20s further south. So that's going to keep things frozen in those hard hit areas. Another wave moving across the northern U.S., but looks like not much moisture is going to be associated with that. And we'll see a continued moderation of this cold polar high on Friday in Texas and some much needed sun. Those waves along the east coast gradually move offshore and carry the precip with them late on Friday. And then it's going to be pretty nice across much of the eastern U.S., although still cold. Then going into Saturday, you can see the warm air advection get started in Texas. Southerly winds and a very significant warm-up. And that will continue through the weekend. I can give you a sample there at Dallas Saturday night. There's the sounding coming up to 42 degrees. Still a lot of cold air in the lower levels. So we may see some clouds associated with that. On the other hand, above the frontal layer, not much moisture. So I'm not too sure about that. Saturday may be sunny. Then looks like some more cold air coming south there, but that's not going to be very severe. There's that cold front coming into Texas Sunday. A little rain out ahead of that. And some snow in the Chicago area. And up in Canada, vast westerly flow picking up. Lots of downslope, turbulent weather, maybe kind of showery up north, and unsettled. And that'll move across the prairies and the northern plains, so windy west winds. And going into the middle of next week, here comes the next system, and that's what we're going to be watching next week. Looks dry initially. We talked about that earlier. We'll have to see how that pans out. And eventually it will get into some moisture in the southeast U.S. since we're bringing this onshore flow. But that's about 180 hours out, so we're not going to worry too much about that. It does look like some rain along the Gulf Coast area somewhere and some snow back in West Texas. Looks like not very much of it. So that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I would also like to thank our new supporter, Herman Eschewis, thank you very much for supporting the program. I'm going to leave you with some footage from July 2018. This was the day that North Texas got up to 110 degrees in many places. So that'll give you a little bit of a different reality for the next minute. So enjoy, and hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.